Hello everyone, welcome to episode 14 of the Dark Souls New Guy walkthrough. Today we are going to be tackling the Consumed King's Garden and the Untended Graves. The Untended Graves um, being the later area past the uh, Consumed King's Garden. They're both pretty small, so we're going to cover them both in this episode. It's only uh, like 37 minutes long. So, not the longest episode, but that's alright, there's a lot to cover still. So, the uh, Consumed King's Garden, um, to get there, you need to have killed the Dancer already. And, um, if you haven't killed the Dancer already, you're about at the level where you probably could tackle it. Um, I would recommend killing the Dancer before, um, taking on all the other Lords of Cinder, because after you kill all the Lords of Cinder, it teleports you to the dancer boss fight room and um, if you're not careful you'll basically fight two bosses in a row and you might not have any Estus so that probably won't end very well so typically I like to take out the dancer before that that way I'm not um, you know caught in an awkward position um, you can totally avoid fighting the dancer uh, when you get teleported there but you have to be careful where you walk like you can just bone right out so Basically, you just want to go to the Dancer Bonfire and uh, climb the ladder. You're going to go straight to the left. And once you go through that archway, you can summon and be invaded. So just uh, be aware of that. And uh, you're going to deal with Cathedral Knights and um, Passive Men, mostly. Some Thralls and a couple of Clerics, but that's more or less all you're going to fight in this area. So if you have anything with a Guard Break Weapon Art, you're going to be good to go against these guys. They're super easy because uh, all they do is hang out behind their tower shield and they swing great maces but they hit pretty hard so you still gotta give them their give them their space sometimes so when you go down this uh, elevator you're gonna want to roll off before you get to the bottom there's poison gas at the bottom and if you go all the way down you'll miss this Estus shard and this titanite ch chunk that I'm about to get there's nothing else down there at the bottom other than uh, getting toxic so there's really no reason to do it so there's pus of men right there, and kind of that purple haze that's poison gas. So you want to spend as little time in there as possible. You'll get the ta toxic status effect. So normally I just avoid the pus of men, but I'm going to kill them, uh, at least this one, just to show you that um, what they drop is really not worth the effort, so you're just better off avoiding them. At this point in the game, um, drops like large titanite shards which is in my opinion not worth the effort because these things are pretty dangerous you can see you only hit me like twice and uh you know almost died so and i have like i am not a slouch with my health there is a ton of health there's like 1800 health so it's definitely not a um not a light hit that i'm getting so you go to this middle right here cathedral knight so a little more of the same just wait for him to hide behind his shield and then hit him with the weapon art. Or you can kick him a few times and do the same thing. These guys are also fairly easy to get behind, so you can uh, you can just get behind him and backstab him and stuff too. Or you just fight him the old fashioned way. Whatever, uh, whatever it is that works for you. And these guys drop large titanite shards too and they drop some of their gear, which is cool but heavy. So now I'm going to go underneath this platform. There's going to be some ninja gear. So you're going to have like the shadow shadow set or shadow garb or whatever. And the claw. Yeah. And then this other thing is a black fire bomb. So stuff a ninja would have, I guess. And um, so you're going to get toxic more than likely. And it's good if you have blooming purple moss clumps. I do not. So, you know. I'm just going to have to deal with this annoying noise for a little while. But that being said, I can't get more toxic, so I'm just going to cruise around and grab things. So it's human pine resin over here. Head up this stairway, there will be a titanite chunk. And I'm just waiting a second to avoid this dude. And I'm jump down just to see if there is anything over here. I don't remember if there was yeah there is right there so i think that's a deep gem a uh, dark gem so that's like you know does dark damage nothing crazy i'm gonna use a divine blessing to cure my 
toxic and heal. And I'm just going to run away from that hollow because it's really not worth fighting. Um, I mean, the hollow is not really dangerous, but at the same time, just whatever, you know. He's going to be a drop in the bucket for souls, and it's not going to be really worth my effort, so. And down here is another Titanite chunk. And there is human pine resin. So that's pretty much all the loot in this little courtyard. And now we're going to have this elevator. You ride the elevator up, and you're going to go through a hallway and some stairs. And that's going to lead to the very beginning area, and that's the shortcut. So this is a very, very small optional area. But there's a lot of good loot in it, <coughs> tons of chunks. So, and they're basically just, for the most part, unguarded. So if you wanted to, you could just make a run right through here. Um, I've seen videos online of people beating the, the dancer really early and getting up to like a plus, plus eight or plus nine weapon, like with the quickness, which uh, will make the rest of the game uh, just super easy. And they just suicide run for all the, all the materials. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much. If you want to see that kind of stuff, you can check out any. Uh, a lot of speedrunners will do that sort of thing. They'll go, they'll kill the dancer early, and um, you know they'll just get the. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> get all the upgrade material, get their weapon swinging real hard, and then just beat things up. And right here is another Titanite chunk. So yeah, that's a bunch of chunks right there. This leads back to that beginning area, the archway to me be my left, and I'm just going to turn right around and head down that elevator. <coughs> now this elevator has got the same uh, thing going on, where uh, you can jump off before you get to the bottom. There's going to be a ring called the Dragon Scale Ring, and that reduces your backstab damage taken. Uh, if that's a problem for you, then you know it's a good ring for you, but it's not Dark Souls 1, so it's not going to be super backstab fest so you go over there and then um, you pick up the ring and then it's gonna set you up uh, pretty much right behind a dude to go backstab him which is kinda funny then there are two cathedral knights with uh, ultra great swords the cathedral knights with ultra great swords are a huge pain in the ass they hit like trucks and you want to separate them to fight them one by one so there's that that one right there to the right a little bit and then the one in the doorway further to the right if you go down here there's an NPC summon for Hawkwood and he can help you out with all this stuff because he's trying to follow the path of the dragon and right now I'm just checking to see if uh, I forgot anything because I don't usually spend too much time in this area I kind of just grab stuff and run and the less notable loot I'll just ignore oftentimes so, pretty much I'm just going to fight this guy on this area right here, and if you do, you won't aggro the, uh, you won't aggro the other knight, so you kind of just do your best to get behind him and backstab him, which I'm failing at pretty miserably, and I have a hard time, uh, figuring where the hell his back is. I don't know if it's because his shoulders are turned or what, or but yeah, I'm just not so hot at that. But these guys aren't bad when they're all by themselves, especially if you uh, back off from them. And you have 100% shield, that makes life a lot easier. Uh, normally I don't hide behind shields, but with these guys it's uh, not a terrible strategy. You can parry them, I'm pretty sure, but the, um, the consequences for missing that parry are usually be dying. Or they'll do little kicks and shit that I can't parry, and that's usually when I'll end up parrying it, so I just... I haven't figured these guys out uh, to the point where I can parry them on a regular basis. I don't usually farm these guys, so basically I just kind of do it the old-fashioned way. Like that headbutt right there, that would have been... I'm sure I would have freaking tried to parry that. And can't parry his head, so... Even though that should uh, jack him up, because you're smacking him with, uh, with your shield, but... That right there is the magic stone plate ring, so that boosts your magic defense, which is a pretty appropriate item right here, because... Pretty sure Osira, Osiris or Ciros or whatever the hell his stupid name is does magic damage. Um, he's susceptible to bleed, which is what uh, I think I'm gonna 
exploit and being a dragon he's weak to lightning so that's also another viable buff strategy that you can use um, <coughs> so usually I try to just hit him as much as I can in the first phase because he's pretty calm I'll let him talk So, dude thinks we're going to try to take his invisible baby, which may or may not exist. You can hear it crying, so I guess it might, but uh, yeah, he's a dragon, and in his first phase, he kind of walks around with his staff, and he whacks you with it, and then he'll cast certain spells and stuff, but he's not, not a whole lot. He's not super dangerous in this phase. Usually I just try to crowd his, uh, his leg area and uh, clobber him. And the reason I'm being so aggressive is because I'm just trying to get bleed to proc as much as I can. So he does that little area effect. You just want to watch out for that. And then when you get to about half life, he's going to smash his, smash his baby and uh, go crazy beast mode. So unlike normal every other beast fight in the game, um, getting right behind his leg is not the safest place because he can uh, he can hit you with it his tail he does a little spin attack and um, he does a lot of charging and stuff so it's for me it's a little difficult to find a, an area that's kind of safe to hang around in and because he moves around so much it's kind of a you know it, it can be a bastard getting some damage down on this guy because he just moves around and like weird things do a ton of damage like that right there he kind of like walked over me and did a just a boatload of damage but pretty much because I'm doing the bleed thing I'm just trying to I'm just being real aggressive and trying to hit him a bunch of times to get bleed to proc every time I, I go after him uh, if you hit him in the head like that you can stun him and it does more damage but uh, usually I don't bother mostly because it's hard hard enough to hit like any part of him let alone like a specific part of him but that was him <coughs> he's not super uh, difficult but uh he can present some trouble periodically he'll kill me in his beast mode he'll just do a bunch of spins and run me over and it just won't work out well so right after that you can go through this door and there are going to be there's going to be a serpent man who is going to be kind of a, a little hint as to what you're going to be dealing with later if you choose to go the next optional way this one is uh, not that tough he is the more aggressive two dagger kind so like later on when you go to Archdragon Peak right there is the path of the dragon so to go to Archdragon Pe Peak you need that gesture and that's part of the reason why I'm coming here before I go to the profane capital is because that's the entrance um, that chest over there that I just opened had Titanite scales in it and this one's gonna have another Titanite scale <coughs> And if you're watching that little phantom, you're going to do the same thing, and here you are. A secret area that's optional called the Untended Graves. If you uh, pay attention to the layout of this place, you're going to notice a few funny things about it that I, uh, I'm not going to spoil right away. <coughs> so I just went back to Firelink Shrine to uh, sell these souls and level up real quick. Uh, what you can get from Osiris is the uh, White Dragon Breath and the Moonlight Greatsword. The Moonlight Greatsword is uh, its not essential if you're making a, a Sorcerer build, but it is probably one of your best options for a weapon. It does a ton of damage, and uh, it doesn't suffer by being one-handed, so it's, it's pretty good. And especially since they changed its weapon art, or they made it um, they made its special abilities better, and they also increase the swing speed of one-handing it so it's just a little slower than a straight sword but it does a lot of damage so pretty much I just you know 
spent all my souls and now I'm looking for stuff to sell to level up and uh, I'm not going to use any of those weapons because they're pretty much junk and I sell the Morian blade because I'm probably not going to use that because the uh, if I'm using the barbed straight sword there's no reason to use the Morian blade honestly because I can't buff it so um, it does have a good like red tear stone effect but honestly I don't plan on uh, utilizing that so it's kind of useless for me. <coughs> so back to the untended graves and we're gonna go grab the striving stone pretty useless and we're gonna head this way to the left. There are going to be Corvians and a storyteller. So you want to take these guys out before they all go beasty because uh, you know a as always these guys oh, lock on screwed me I gotta like relax with that right thumbstick sometimes. I play unlocked so much that uh, sometimes I screw myself when I lock on. So with these guys you want to take them out quick because uh, any previous dealings with them will let you know that you really want to not let them swarm you when they're going to get their wings out. So that ring was the Ashen Estus ring. The Ashen Estus ring works like the Estus ring where it makes your Estus uh, more powerful. Like It just heals more but it works for your FP. I've never needed it ever one time have I thought using the Ashen S this was good. That was super fail boat parry two times, three times, I decided it's not my day for parrying. So I'm pretty much just gonna dodge around him and use my shield. So these guys, uh, there's two of these guys so you want to draw them out one by one like I did, where I let the I let them come to me. I'm gonna use this red moss clump, even though I say I said they're useless. I still have it, and uh, that's just saving me a time tax right now, because normally I would just let that wear down. But right over here is a dog. The dogs hit pretty hard over here, and there's a titanite chunk. So now I'm just gonna find that other grave warden while he's kicking around, because I don't want to fight the grave warden and dogs. So this one, a uh, little, little harder to hit me. It's not feeling it for some reason. So that worked out all right. And they drop large shards. Sometimes they drop chunks. So right over here, you want to kill these two dogs as they're laying down, and then you come around this way behind this one dog. You can kill it or have it come to you. And then those other two will just stand there, sit there and watch. And then uh, you can come up to them and, uh, you know, <laughs> not have them pincer you like they did with their sweet double envelopment over there. But you can see how, how quickly it can go poorly with these stupid dogs. So kill them and we're going to head this way. <coughs> so over here there should be two big crystal beasts. So they're your bigger crystal lizards. And I'm not sure if you can bleed them, so I'm not sure why I did that. But if you kind of inch your way forward, one of them will notice you, and you can fight it. You want to keep the fight over here, because you don't want to aggro both the beasts at the same time. For the same reason you don't want to fight all the dogs at the same time, because you want the goodies, but you also don't want to die. So same story with these guys. You're going to want to get kind of where their hindquarters are. And I really needed that, and it stinks that I didn't get it because I'm pretty sure I woke up the other lizard. And yeah, well you can totally hear him coming. So that was uh, fairly timely. So right over here, just same thing. I'm gonna take him to more easy for me to maneuver on ground. And then from there, I'm just gonna hit him like I normally do. Try to get behind his leg, even though I'm not. Just keep an eye for his attacks. And hopefully stun him. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case today. Oh, we got it, but it didn't matter. So you get another two Titanite scales. So that's four Titanite scales right there. So since we've gone into the Consumed King's Garden, from the beginning of this video, there are seven titanite scales that we got which is pretty good that's that's almost a 
that's almost an upgrade right there like uh, a high level upgrade so from like three to four I'm pretty sure you need eight you might need ten I don't know it's kind of an ignorant amount from uh, three to four but after that you only need a slab and you'll have a, a maximum upgraded weapon so coming around here there's an NPC that can't that may or may not um, show up it's uh, an invasion there you go crystal whatever the hell her name is I think she's like um, she's got the crystal rapier crystal sages rapier which is kind of like the only person ever to use it and it's actually doing a pretty good da amount of damage so I call shenanigans on all that but pretty much I'm just gonna try to get her to roll off the cliff because it's funny <laughs> alright so that did chip a pretty good amount of damage through there so she doesn't really give you anything other than uh, more Estus to use there's no items that you get from her so you know just basically kill her however you want and don't worry about item drops even though uh, invasions like they go straight to your inventory anyway so not even a big deal so you get more of these guys um, these guys are a little harder and craftier than the ones that you fight earlier on in the game and uh, I don't know if you recognize this area yet but if you don't you will soon because this is uh, looking pretty familiar to episode one except it's a little darker so right over here is um, there's usually people to summon and there's an NPC summon right there it's the uh, sword master he has the chaos blade so he's uh, he's a little cooler than he once was or the blade of chaos. I don't. I don't remember the, the no nomenclature of it. So you go in here, and you're gonna fight Champion Gundir, who is the boss that I have the hardest time with for some freaking reason. This boss just whoops my ass. So we're gonna try. I just can't get it can't get the parry timing down, I just, I just can't figure him out. He just beats my ass constantly, so you're gonna you're gonna witness that. A lot of bad play in here. Some people got this guy figured out. I am not uh, I'm not that person that has him figured out. So he's uh, pretty hyper aggressive and he's got a lot of range. You can parry him, but uh, you gotta be real careful about when you try to parry, as you can see. I'm uh, one for like 10 in attempts, and honestly, I'm only doing like 500 damage with that. So, you know, that's that's like almost three hits. So it's good, but it's not like game-breakingly good. Mostly, it just gives me time to breathe. So, there we go. Starting to get it a little better. And now he's in super hyper mode. I cannot for the life of me dodge this fucking lunge charge attack. I can't figure out how to parry it. I don't know. It's just whenever he does it, I'm just basically prepared to, to take it in the face. He has super long range, tons of reach with that halberd. So unlike the first fight where you fight him, you want to be real, real aggressive about outspacing him. And he can move, man. You can see like how just how much he moves. So, I took that in the face, and now, yep, that's, that's pretty much going to be the end of it for me. I'm surprised he didn't hit me there, actually. It's, uh, it's right about that dangerous area where you're going to think you're out of range and it'll just get you. And there we go. Like I said, gets me every time with that. If he doesn't hit me with the charge, he hits me with the spin. So, we're just going to speed this run back up so you don't have to... Uh, you know, suffer through it, because there's really no new information here, and I'm just going to run straight to it, and as you can see, you can fairly easily, I think I only took one hit there, make your way back without uh, taking any damage, except when you run, when you go in here now, he is, uh, he's weak, so he's just going to stand right up immediately, so you can't get any free hits on him, so subsequent tries are going to be more difficult than your initial try. Alright, so this bleed strategy wasn't really working for me. Um, 
probably going to try using the shield and uh, spacing myself out and just really trying to cherry pick when uh, when I'm in his range and uh, trying to parry him. I can't be super aggressive and in his face. So there we go. Ba basically I'm just waiting for those those thrust attacks, basically like the first one when he's doing the, uh, the thrust attacks that I like to parry in the first fight because I can't seem to figure out the timing on the sweep attacks. That would have been a good parry if he would have hit me. I don't know why he didn't hit me. He's so good at hitting me all the other times. But uh, I guess when it'll work out for him. Oh, again, he missed. So those would have been two good parries and that would have helped out a lot. Because, uh, yeah, I got him down to about two thirds at this point. Which is not terrible. I only got hit like maybe few times so this is this is going fairly well um, I was feeling real good about this fight when I uh, I was playing at the time so I tried parrying that as you can see there's uh, just no there's no parry in the damn thing because there were four hits and he got me so we're doing real well up until that point where things went south pretty fast so with this guy you just for me, you just got to be on point with those parries, because the parries are going to be like the saving, saving grace. They just ruin his rhythm, and they just give you time to think, slow the fight down. So I just killed that Grave Warden because I got sick of it following me, and um, I decided that I was going to summon the Swordmaster because, you know, there's no reason to just keep struggling my way through this. Uh, if you're watching this walkthrough and you uh, you know you have the opportunity to fight this boss alone and solo it that's sweet but at the same time if there's somebody available with a big fuck off sword definitely summon them because this boss is much easier when he's not focusing all of his attention on you so right now he's gonna focus all his attention on me because I was the first thing it saw that person is just going to try to get him with the Black Knight sword. So, that was pretty good damage, um, that sword. So, usually when I fight this guy, I like to use uh, a big heavy weapon because, you know, I don't seem to be able to get a lot of opportunities to, to hit him. But, uh, as you can see, you know, a couple good hits definitely adding up. We already got him down to the second phase, and I think I'll, I'll have used, like, one Estus. Yeah. Maybe two, because I'll get sloppy. But uh, if he's not trying to actively hit you, you can kind of just, you know, just hit him from behind. <laughs> and he just, like, freaking high uh, chopped me down. And that's, that's Gundir. He is a filthy, rotten beating by yourself. But, if you have this cool, cool guy over here with a symbol of avarice helping you out, or even the Swordmaster. The Swordmaster is not really worth his salt for damage, but he's definitely helpful when it comes to having uh, Gundir attack somebody else. And sometimes that's really all you need is just a little bit of time to get the pressure off of you. So, you know, it's uh, not the way I wanted to beat him. I wanted to beat him, you know, solo, but at the same time, you know, summons are in the game for a reason, so you know, if, you, uh, if you're struggling with this guy, get a summon, uh, and you'll see how much easier it is. If you want the challenge, totally try it, you know, solo, but at the same time, summons are in the game. So, you can get invaded before you get there, you can, you can summon while you're hanging out. So, this area right here is full of black knights, there's two types, the uh, axe and greatsword kind. The axe kind uh, make me happy because I have a much easier time parrying them for some reason it just makes sense in my brain the way it all works maybe it's because there's this giant axe saying hey I'm over here time to start the parry animation so right over there to the left there's another one I'm just gonna avoid him for now and I'm gonna go over here and grab this hornet ring because it is a really good item for the way that I play I like using parries and Hornet Ring increases your critical damage, like a really significant amount. So you'll notice.
notice I'm doing like 451 to these guys with my normal parries right now and it's gonna be much much better once I put that ring on and drop anything for me this is a good place to farm uh, for black knight items because you know there's just so many of them in one spot and they're right next to a bonfire so you know, if you're, you're farming for black knight armor weapons what have you this is the place to do it so now I'm gonna run over here and we're gonna get all the goodies inside the darkened firelink shrine so this is why we went here this coiled sword fragment basically a reusable homeward bone but I'm not gonna use it that way because uh, homeward bones are cheap 500 souls and nobody has a limit on the amount that you have so you can really just buy a ton of them and not worry about it so right over here you can buy the wolf armor set wolf knight armor it's your artorias set and the priest ring the priest ring increases your faith this is the only place to buy the priest ring in the game so that's pretty much where you gotta get it head over here to where andre would be and you're gonna have the blacksmith hammer which is a club weapon then you head over here where arena would be and there is an illusory wall that I found by accident one day um, I was very excited and you get the eyes of the firekeeper which uh, are important if you want a certain type of ending oh excuse me yeah, so if you want um, one of the endings you need the eyes of the firekeeper and then there's uh, no other items in this area. So you can go and explore and check shit out, try to do the little jump to get up into uh, the snuggly nest and all that. But there's nothing there, so it's really just a waste of time. So I'll save you that time by uh, telling you that it's not worth it. Right here is a Black Knight, and up here where you fought the Swordmaster is going to be the Chaos Blade. Which is a pretty good get. And we're gonna fight this dude. So, right now, 528. Pretty good, pretty good difference there. You see the, uh, the, the difference in, um, damage much more pronounced in, uh, you know, when you're fighting player characters uh, it does a, a ton more damage and it uh it's got the old demon souls like vicious animations which are cool so you can tell immediately if somebody's getting you and they're using a uh, a hornet ring because the animations are going to be different and that's neat so I like that I like little details like that this game does so well with all its little details for the most part and then it totally misses some other ones like I had a friend tell me that uh, Andre of Astora's mouth moves when he talks but like weird not it's not lip sync but he's the only character I've noticed that that the mouth moves at all so you know you get a lot of little details like when you're hollow you don't cast the shadow or reflect on water which is like such a cool little de detail that you can super easily miss and you know they did that on purpose, because that's to that's not an accident. Like, there's no reason why that would be accidental. And that's like a cool, awesome little detail. And when I'm down on these games, it's not because... Well, not these games, but this game in particular. It's not because I, uh, you know, it's a bad game or anything like that. It's just that, you know, FromSoft set the, the bar so damn high with the first one. And still did a lot of good stuff in the second one and this game mechanically is so fucking satisfying that the uh you know i just wish i just feel like you know if they if they spent a little more time on it it would have been like a masterpiece but the story is so disjointed that it kind of kills it for me so yeah right, it's more or less going to be the the episode i'm going to just run around and uh trade the coil sword fragment for the uh, for a titanite uh, slab 
slab. That's the one. Haha. -ha. There's not a lot of them in the game. It's less than 10, I think. But there might be more with the uh, the DLCs now. There probably is more. So, right there, Titanite slab. Very good. You need that to get um, some weapons up to. Yeah, I already got the chunk. So you need that to get normal weapons up to plus 10 and boss weapons and special weapons up to plus 5, which is their highest level. So that's um, it's good because you, you want your stuff to be the best it can be. And even you know 10 to 15 points of damage make, make a big difference in the long run. And a lot of times uh, once you get things up to plus 10, the scaling gets better too. So you're going to get that boost of damage for the upgrade and then the scaling boost. So again... The bigger the number next to your weapon, the better. So she sells all the boss wep uh, armors and stuff once you kill them and other NPCs that are notable. And right over here, you can get, with the soul of Gundir, the Gundir's halberd, which is a really good strength weapon. And you can get the prisoner's chain, which is uh, much better. They, they uh, nerf the amount of damage that you take. Uh, it's really good for low-level PvP. You'll see a lot of people uh, using it. They'll have friends twink it, or they'll just cheat engine it in. And it gives you five points to vigor, endurance, and vitality. And that's a really big thing, uh, low-level, because five points of vigor, low-level, are going to be worth more HP than you know high levels. So, And at that point, it'll outweigh the damage that you take extra. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. So... Now I'm just leveling up and making sure I have enough to, uh, I'm just going to buy some stuff that I keep using, like the Karthus Rouge, the Lightning stuff, and uh, some, some Dark Damage, because Dark Damage is uh, pretty good sometimes. Yeah, and maybe some Dual Charms, Undead Hunter Charms, rather. So, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you tune in again for the... Uh, the next episode of the Dark Souls New Guy walkthrough. Bye.